Hello, this is the second training presentation demonstrating the use of the EBU Bridge Scoring Program to score a pairs event at Pinner Bridge Club. In the previous demonstration, we've looked at starting a new pairs event, selecting the movement and initiating the bridge mates, all for a simple event that comprises only of one section of play. What I want to do now is cover how you, you do this for events where there are more than one section of play, which is sometimes required at our club on Monday sessions. So let's just remind ourselves where we are in the overall scoring process. And I want to refer again to the quick reference checklist. Remember, that's the simple two page uh, quick reference guide that I put together to keep um, and, and, and that I recommend you keep in front of you at all times. You'll see that we've now demonstrated several activities in the whole scoring process. Um, and this will cover most of the events that we host at Pinner. However, on Monday evenings, we often have a lot of players and due to the layout of the building, we choose to run these events as a dual section event with a section downstairs and a section upstairs, both using two identical sets of pre-dealt boards. It's best to score these sections as a single combined event so that you produce a single ranking for the whole evening. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So just an overview of how EBU score deals with multi-section events. So let's imagine we've actually got a two-section event. The way to handle it is firstly we'd create an event for the first section, say downstairs, and we'd set up the movement. Um, before we start playing that, uh, before we initiate the bridge mates there, we then exit that event and we'd create a second independent event covering the upstairs section and select the separate movement for that section. What we'd then do is before progressing to initiating the bridge mates, we'd actually select the, um, the both, both movements together and merge them um, so that they join together. We'd then import the deal and that would enable us to move forward with initiating the bridge mates and starting the rest of the scoring process. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to cut to an example to do that, but let's just um, let's just talk through the example that I'm going to cover first. So the other night at the club we had um, 12 complete tables, um, and the director chose on that night to split the field in a way to have two complete sections. We had seven tables playing downstairs, playing a 28 board seven round Mitchell movement. And there were five tables upstairs playing a nine round 27 board Howe movement. So what I'd like to do is replicate that and show you how to do that in the program. I'm gonna to jump to the program now and uh, we'll set it up. So first thing to do as always is start the EBU score pairs program. Now I'll run through these steps relatively quickly because we covered a lot of them in the previous video. Okay, we click on pairs events, takes us into the event history menu, and we'll create a new event for section A. So we'll name the event Monday pairs. And I'll just put demo in there. Um, the date of the event's already pre-selected for us as before. We always only have one session. We never, we don't really run anything more than si more than single session events. But of course, we are running a two-section event. So this is the first section. We'll call that A. So that's okay. That's already pre-populated for us. We'll put the director in. So stick in the name of the director. Let's assume it's Lewis, and we'll put me in there as the scorer. Um, so that's fine. Um, that's all we need to do. There's no need to import the deal because we can import the deal once for the whole merged event, and I'll show you how to do that uh, at a later, uh, you know, a, a few, you know, a few steps along the process. Um, so that's all we need to do. We've created the first um, event, so we need to select the movement for that event. And as I say, that first uh, event was going to be um, seven tables. So once again, in the movement selection, click on seven tables. We're given a few options, standard Mitchell or a hesitation Mitchell. Now we played that, we can play that as a standard Mitchell, um, seven tables, seven rounds of, of four boards, gives us 28 boards. Um, so that would be how we'd play that. There is no missing pair. 
Um, but of course, as always with Mitchell movements, it's really important that we specify a single winner Mitchell event. Otherwise, the field will be scored um, north, south and east, west separately. And we don't want that. So now we've chosen a single winner Mitchell event. We have to specify the arrow switch. Um, and the right arrow switch for that movement would be just the last round. OK. Um, and that's really all we needed to do to, uh, to check that out. Um, we specified that in the right way and we can click OK. So just confirm that. Seven tables, seven rounds of four boards, boards one to 28, one winner, and there's no missing pair. So we're happy with that. That's the downstairs um, section A complete. Um, we've now specified the event and selected the movement for it. What we don't want to do now is progress with that and start bridge mate scoring. That, that wouldn't help us. So what we now want to do is exit that event and we go back to the event history menu. That event is now there. It's event number 22 at the bottom of the list. And what we want to do is create another new event, this one to cover upstairs. So let's do the same thing, create new event. Um, we can still call the event a name Monday Pairs Demo. That's absolutely fine. Um, the date and, and session don't change, but of course section is now B. So we'll do that. Nothing else needs to change here. And again, don't need to import the deal at this point. We can do that uh, at the next stage of the process. Um, so we we'll click on OK. We've entered the details for that and we'll select the movement. Um, and if I remember rightly, we said we had five tables here. So we'll do that. Click in five tables. Um, and of course, there's a pinner recommended how movement for five tables already programmed into EBU score. That's exactly the movement that we'd want here. If we check that out, um, so if we went to our folder for um, uh, recommended club movements, we'd see that uh, the recommended uh, how movement for five tables is known as 10P5H. That's in our folder. Uh, the, that's the definition and description of it. Um, and I've given that the same reference here. If we clicked on the description, We'd see um, everything we need to see there to um, to confirm it's OK. So uh, it tells you how to set the boards out. Um, and that's really proving that uh, that is the right movement. And again, if we just wanted to check that out, we could always print the table cards. So those would display on screen. And if we looked at those against the green table cards in that folder for that particular recommended movement, we'd find that they're exactly the same. It's a good match. We know we've got the right movement. No problem there. OK, so there's no missing pair um, and there's nothing else to specify on that now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll click OK. And once again, we've got to confirm the movement. Five tables, uh, nine sets of three board rounds, one to 27 in play. That sounds absolutely fine. We're going to click yes. And we've now selected the move for section B. Now, once again, we have to go back to the event menu or to the um, event history menu. So let's firstly exit that particular event. And here we are now. We're back in back in the event history menu and the two separate section A and section B events are there at the bottom of the list. OK, so now what we need to do is actually combine those two into a single multi section event. So we click on the first one. Hold the shift button and click on the second. So we've now got both of them selected in blue there. And we click down here on merge sections. Ask us if we want to combine events 22 and 23. And of course the answer is yes. And it now tells us combined into a single event called event number 24. Still Monday pairs demo. And now sections at the, in the heading on sections it says multi. OK, so we want that event and we want to proceed with it. So actually what we want to do now is retrieve it. That's the event we want. And we can now click on the event details for that. and Just look through here. This is the point now where we can import the deal. So let's click on import the deal. Um, and exactly as before, we press on import deal again, opens up the folder of relevant deals. We're looking for today's date, which is the 21st of November. So it's 18 of 021. Click on that, open. That uh, puts it at the top of the list. It's ready to be imported. Click on OK, and it's come in there. So we now click on OK. We've done everything that we needed to do to um, set that session up. So we now have two separate sections combined into a multi-section. We've selected the movements for everything, 
um, and we've imported the deal. So we're now ready to progress further in the process. OK, so the next step, if we uh, refer back to uh, the um, quick reference guide, would of course be to launch the BridgeMates, the um, BridgeMate control software. So that's exactly what we'll do. It's, it's really what we demonstrated previously, but I'll just show you how to do it one more time um, for the purposes of demonstration. So we, in this event now, we've got two separate sections combined into a multi-event. The, the movements are set. Um, we're no longer allowed to select the movement, if you notice there. Um, let's click on BridgeMate scoring. So there we go. And there's the section A and section B ready to be played and as as the um, once the event starts to be played of course these rows will turn blue which is uh, exactly how we monitor the progress of the play through the evening um, so if you remember how we did this before we create the database once we create the database this uh, um, this particular um, option becomes live launch BCS so we check that reset server is has, is ticked which it is and then we click launch BCS and we get the final prompt just to ask us if that's what we want to do. And of course, that is exactly what we want to do. When we do this, as before, what would happen is this would now open the BridgeMate control software, initiate that. Um, the BridgeMate control software window would open on screen. On this particular PC that I'm recording these demos on, I don't have um, BridgeMate control software working, so we won't actually see that for effect. But what I'll do is I would click on yes. And after BridgeMate control software opens, the window would open. Um, you'd see that the BridgeMate's become live, minimize that window. And as I've said before, just keep EBU score running in this page, which would help you to monitor the progress of the event. So you're now at the point where you can set the bridge timer working. Um, and uh, then you can go and sit down. You don't have to do any more work on the scoring, really. You can go sit down, start playing bridge. Um, the bridge mates will be live. People can enter their details and start to enter the scores as they've played the boards. Um, so that's really the whole process initiated. Um, let's just kick up. Let's just remind ourselves where we are in the overall process. Um, so we've now completed everything on page one of the quick reference guide checklist. Um, what's left to cover will be shown in the third video, which will be what we do during play, which is really around just checking on the um, player names and making sure that we've processed any visitors and that all the names are correct uh, in line with what's on the table slips. Um, then it's about what we do when play's finished in terms of checking the results are in and applying any corrections or alterations that might be required. Uh, and then lastly, of course, there's the um, uh, procedure around printing out the result and uploading the results both to BridgeWebs and to the EBU. Okay, so that's all going to be covered in the next uh, in the next of these three training presentations. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you've got any questions or feedback, let me have it. Um, I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next film. Thanks very much for watching, and bye bye now.